Praise your name, Lord Jesus. We just want to thank and praise you for the pardon we have received through the cross. We want to thank and praise you that we have received your righteousness. We want to thank and praise you that we have a right standing in your sight. We thank you. Your word says, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We rejoice, Lord, and we worship you. We want to thank and praise you. We want the whole world to know who you are. So be glorified in our midst. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Father, I 
Praise the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wonderful time to go into God's word. As we are going to meditate on the word of God today, the title of my message would be Justified by Faith. Justified by Faith. And that's taken from the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 1a. Romans chapter 5 verse 1a. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The King James Version says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's ask the Lord to guide us through this uh, message of justification by faith. Dear Lord, we just want to thank and praise you for all the blessing, the gift of justification that we have received from you. Thank you, Lord, for the grace of God that's revealed to us through our Lord Jesus Christ. And as we meditate on your word, Lord, we ask you to speak to us and guide us. We give this time into your hands. In your name, Lord Jesus, we make this prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, justification is a judicial act of God. It's a benefit or a blessing or a gift that originates from the atonement, from the grace of God, it comes to us through our Lord Jesus Christ. Justification is the heart and the soul of the gospel of Christ. You can't preach the gospel without preaching justification by faith. Now, we should find out what, is, what does the justification mean in Hebrew and Greek. Now, 
just for your information the hebrew word is tosdak and the greek word is diakeo now uh, the hebrew word means to justify or to make right and the greek word means to make righteous if you go to analyze the word justify it means to prove to show to be just right to vindicate as right to declare clear free from guilt or blame to absolve to clear to pardon or to treat as just to acquit declare righteous or to pronounce a sentence of acceptance now there are two alternatives for men to seek justification if you want to uh, be justified before god there are two alternatives one is by yourself self effort personal goodness good works self purification personal walk of righteousness apart from any help from god or i could say self righteousness or observing the law 100% the law of moses that's one option for a person to get justified or try to be justified in the sight of god the second option is to be justified by faith that is trusting believing accepting god's offer to justify those who accept or come to him by faith and accept his free gift of grace in order to understand justification or the necessity of justification it is necessary to understand the position of man before a righteous god man is a sinner man is not a sinner because he sins man is a sinner because he is born as one the act of sin of a sinless man adam brought us into a state or a condition of sin brought adam into a condition of sin which was irreversible so sin was an intrusion into man's humanity so we are sinners because of what adam did he sinned we are sinners because we have inherited a nature to sin we are sinners because of our actions because of our choices and we are sinners because the word of god says we are sinners so there are four things to uh, to show that we are sinners okay and uh, man has lost his right standing before god because of his status god allowed sin to mar his creation he permitted evil to invade the earth the bible says in the book of romans chapter 8 verse 20 the reason of him who has subjected the same in hope he allowed the sin it allowed man to fall in sin he allowed sin to come in the earth he was not happy with it he was not happy with it but he allowed sin he did not stop sin from coming on the earth but this gave him an opportunity to display something very beautiful this gave him an opportunity to reveal his attribute which was not revealed the attribute of grace reveal his grace okay the bible says where sin abounded grace did much more abound romans chapter 5 20 and 21 the law was added so that the trespass might increase but where sin increased grace increased all the more so that just as sin reigned in death so also grace might reign 
through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So, because of sin entering the earth, now God had an opportunity to reveal how gracious He is, or His grace, His mercy to all, to our Lord Jesus Christ. So where sin, the King James Version says, sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Now, justification is a desire of unredeemed man. From Adam to Jesus Christ, there was a cry, how can a man be righteous before God? It's a cry of Job, many. How can we be made right before God? It's a cry of man. It's sought by many. It's opposed by many. It's found by a few people. And it's embraced by a few people. Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 7 verses 14b And few there be that find it. And few there be that find it. The way which leadeth unto life. The way that which leadeth unto life, few find it. So, when we read the Bible, we must come across this very important truth. The truth of justification. Now, a question. How can God justify the guilty sinner and himself remain just? How can God justify the sinner without justifying his sin? How can God treat the sinner as a righteous person? How could this be possible? The answer is, God, can, God could do it only because of Jesus. In Christ's substitutionary death on the cross, He, Jesus, expiated our guilt, satisfied the demands of the law, demands for divine justice to be met, he paid the penalty of sin as the righteous one. That's why he's called the lamp of God who takes away the sins of the world. Let's read Isaiah 53 verse 5 and then 11 and 12. First we will read the fifth verse. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds we are healed. Now I'll read it from the King James Version. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. We are healed of the broken relationship with God. The eleventh was B part. By his knowledge my righteous servant will justify many. And he will bear their iniquities. King James Version says, Shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Now we'll read the twelfth verse, B part. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. For he bear the sin of many. So, three times in this chapter we see that Jesus Christ came to take the punishment of our sins so that we could be made righteous before God. A very important scripture in the New Testament, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Read the King James Version. For he had made him, that is Jesus, to be sin for us, sin penalty for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So we are made righteous in Jesus Christ. Made righteous in God's sight because of Jesus. Romans chapter 5 verse 18b says, So also the result of one act of righteousness was justification that brings life for all men. Then the 19th verse says something. For just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. So we see in the book of Romans, I am reading the King James Version. Uh, 
chapter 5, verse 18, me. Even so by the righteousness of one, that is Jesus Christ, the free gift came upon all men to justification of life. That means for life, you are going to be justified if you hold on to what God has offered. His son Jesus Christ on the cross. For as one man's disobedience, that is Adam, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one, that is Jesus, many shall be made righteous. You are not born righteous. You cannot be righteous on your own. But when you come to Jesus and receive him, you are made righteous. Now, justification involves three things. Three things. There are three things you got to know about justification. And they are as follows. Justification involves pardon or remission from sin's penalty. Justification involves imputation of righteousness. Thirdly, justification involves position of right standing before God. Now, just get this. Justification involves three things. First, pardon from sin. Second, imputation of righteousness. And third, position of right standing before God. Now, I'm going to use the parable of the prodigal son. And we can see some aspects of justification. Now, the parable may not do full justice to what I'm going to say. Because the parable is about a back, backslidden Jewish son returning to his father in true repentance. The parable also tells us uh, that uh, it is addressed to the self-righteous Pharisees who looked down, who were judgmental on those who lived immoral life or backsliding Jewish sinners. Okay, the parable is addressed to them. Now when we see the parable of the prodigal son, which is mentioned in Luke chapter 15, when the son returned to his father, if you know the story, he did not know what the outcome would be. He did not know what would happen. Would he be forgiven? Would he be pardoned? Okay, if he were to be pardoned, uh, what would be his life? Would, be, would he be a forgiven person now working with soiled garments, dirty clothes in the backyard? having no rights or claims to all what he had lost because of his rebellion. So he didn't know what the outcome would be. And sometimes we are not clear about what we have received. The, the prodigal son didn't know. Would I be forgiven? And if I am forgiven, would I be with the same dirty clothes working in the backyard having no rights to come to the table where my father is dining, no claims to whatsoever I had in the past because of my rebellion. But notice, when the prodigal son returned in true repentance, the father did three major things and we got to read that. Luke chapter 15, we'll read, from verses 20 to 24. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And so they began to celebrate. 
So we see three major things happening over here. First of all, the father ran to him, gave him an embrace and gave him a kiss when he repented. So this is pardon, the son being pardoned. Then, then we see another aspect of justification, imputation. The best robe and a ring given to him. And third we see, he is brought into a place of fellowship. Place of fellowship. Now, just let us read the 20th verse. Just the 20th verse. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. So we see, here is the embrace of the pardon. Next we see the imputation, the 22 verse, 22nd verse. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Amen. So we see that he is receiving something, an imputation, an impartation from the father. And the next thing we see, that he receives fellowship. 23rd and the 24th verse. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. Amen. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Now, this is the restored position. Now, let's deal with these three things doctrinally. And we'll read, we'll do the first part, the pardon. Justification brings the pardon of God. Now, God does not simply pardon or acquit the guilty. Uh, that would not be righteous and true. It would be putting aside divine justice. When God forgives, he makes a provision so that he can forgive you. And that provision is made through the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. When he, Jesus, he died for us, he took the guilty sinner's place. He died in our place. Now, uh, the book of John says, now you're familiar with this word. John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You are very familiar with this scripture. Let us read another scripture. Romans chapter 5, 6 to 8. Romans chapter 5, verses 6 to 8. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Amen. Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man. Though for a good man, Someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. So Jesus died for us so that we, can, we could come to God. One more important scripture. Through the death on the cross, God demonstrated his righteousness. In other words, what he was saying that I cannot forgive people unless the penalty of sin has been paid. And because the penalty of sin has been paid, now I have an opportunity to forgive people. God forgives on the basis of fulfillment of divine justice. Romans chapter 3, 24 and 25. And are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement Amen. through faith in his blood. Mm -hmm. He did this to demonstrate his justice because in his forbearance he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. Okay. So all the people of the Old Testament in time past were just covered. They were in waiting for a great thing to happen. When Jesus died on the cross, that was the time that God could forgive everybody freely. So without the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
forgiveness was impossible. They were all in waiting. Absolute forgiveness was not possible. And that happened when Jesus Christ paid the price for our sins. This act of forgiveness also proves that God is righteous and just, that he cannot forgive without the fulfillment or the execution of divine justice. Only when divine justice is satisfied, that's what happened on the cross. The penalty of sin, the, the penalty of the law was executed on Jesus Christ. Divine justice was fulfilled, satisfied. The holiness of God was satisfied. The righteousness of the law was upheld, vindicated. Now, God was free to pardon the repentant sinner. Sinners are pardoned not because, simply because God is gracious and merciful. Sinners are forgiven because the penalty of sin has been paid in the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sin is cancelled, cancelled in his substitution, substitutionary sacrifice. We are pardoned. We are judged in Christ by God. He was judged for our sake. We are forgiven. We are justified because of Jesus. So, justification involves pardon. Second point. Justification also involves imputed righteousness. So we are not only pardoned. Something happens when we come to Jesus Christ. We receive imputed righteousness, very important aspect of justification. What is the meaning of impute? To set down, to, to put into one's account, to be counted, to be reckoned or to be imputed. Now, when Adam sinned, he did impute sin to the whole unborn human race. Because of his act of sin, we all automatically became sinners. We inherited a fallen nature. Now, this, the imputed sin of Adam on mankind was put on Jesus Christ at the cross of Calvary. That means the penalty that Adam and all his children had to face, that penalty of sin was put on the Lord Jesus Christ we can say was put into his account and because of the work of the cross he suffered for the penalty of our sins suffered death because he died and rose again now we can be forgiven and also we can receive righteousness because of our faith God can look upon us as righteous or declare us as righteous. In justification, the righteousness of Jesus Christ is now imputed to all those that believe in him. Just as our sin was imputed on Jesus Christ, so now is the righteousness of Jesus Christ imputed to us. His righteousness is now transferred or credited or put into your account. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Now we are counted as righteous. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. In him, in Jesus, we become. We were not originally righteous. But when we come to Jesus, we become the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. Now, God does not violate his righteousness or justice in declaring us as righteous. He can do this because our sins, our unrighteousness, our guilt, our punishment was put on Christ on the cross. 
justification in justification he pronounces the sinner as legally innocent freeing him from all condemnation let's see what scofel has to say about justification judicial act of god whereby he justly declares and treats as righteous the one who believes in jesus christ a beautiful statement declared righteous by the judge himself on the basis of the foundation of fulfilled divine justice at the cross so now justification in justification we receive imputed righteousness now this is a righteousness that doesn't come by our human effort we can say god declares us as righteous we are declared righteous in his sight we are viewed as righteous in his sight by god all righteousness is now imputed to us we are imputed with his righteousness so this is how we should observe scripture so let's come again first of all in in justification we are pardoned we are forgiven justification we also receive righteousness imputed righteousness that means that means because of our faith in what jesus has done for us on the cross we are declared we are viewed as righteous and righteousness is now imputed to us well, the third thing about justification is the position of right standing with god see the story of the prodigal son he he was forgiven but he was not only forgiven he received something from the father the robe and the ring i would term that as imputation the third thing the father said now come and sit with me at the table and let's come back into fellowship so he is not just wandering anywhere he is brought he is justified so that he could come back into the right position i would say right standing before god so in justification we come to the right positioning with god pardon has to do with the penalty of sin being remitted or you are forgiven the judge can pardon a criminal but he is not considered righteous man in the eyes of the society in justification the pardoned one is declared righteous in justification there is also a change of position our standing before god changes actually before uh, we didn't have a right standing before god uh, justification changes that position in adam we were in the position of hostility before god right which is we are enemies with god we were in a state of condemnation before god but now in christ jesus we are restored to god's favor and fellowship just as the prodigal son came back into fellowship at the table a position that was lost in adam is now restored in christ we are legally restored and we can stand in god's presence unshamedly without fear without trembling fearful trembling because now god sees us in christ as his own children through Christ we can come to Jesus what a beautiful position we are no longer enemies we are sons and daughters of the living god the bible says to many as those who received him to them gave he the power to become children of god now what have we seen in justification first of all justification is not by works works of the law of moses and it's not by human effort justification is a gift that comes from god 
justification comes to you because of Jesus, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, because of what he did on the cross. Justification is given freely. Justification is given by faith. Those who have faith in the gospel, in what Jesus has done. We are also justified by the blood of Jesus, the blood of the new covenant. Justification is instantaneous. It's not a long process. It's instantaneous. We are judicially cleared instantaneous, instantaneously. Now there are beautiful songs, old songs, and I'm going to speak about some of these songs which speak about justification and the way it's done instantaneously. Now, uh, see the new songs lack uh, the real biblical scriptures, but I'm going to speak about these old songs. Now, I came across maybe five songs. The first song is, Oh, What a Wonderful Day. Then the next song is, To God Be the Glory. Third is, Blessed Assurance. Fourth is, Heaven came down and glory filled my heart. And fifth is at the cross. Now, listen to these songs. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day. Day I will never forget. Now, through Calvary's love, oh, what a standing is mine. And the transaction so quickly was made when as a sinner I came, took off the offer of grace he did profit. That means... It happened so quickly when I came to Jesus. The next song, To God Be the Glory. Now, the song goes on to say, The wildest offender who truly believes, the wildest offender who truly believes, that moment from Jesus, that moment from Jesus, a pardon receives. Moment from Jesus, pardon receives. Look at this song. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchased of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. Another song. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross, when at the cross, the Savior made me whole. Another song, at the cross, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my sin rolled away. All these songs speak about justification by faith. It's done instantaneously when we come to Jesus and we receive him as our personal saviour. Justification is very important. It's the heart of the gospel. It sets you free. Because of justification, we can worship God freely, without fear. The doors of heaven are open. It's not closed. We are not looking towards a heaven with its doors shut. We are looking at open heavens. where the Savior says, come. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as a personal Savior, let me share with you something, that he loves you. You were born in sin and your sin separated you from God. But there's good news. The Father loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus, so that when you believe in him, you believe that he died for you on the cross, paid for all your sins, died and rose again, shed his precious blood. That faith in what he has done for you on the cross, when you put that faith and trust, God forgives you all your sins. When you repent, acknowledge your sins and say, Lord, I believe that you are my Savior. You died for me on the cross. God looks upon that faith and says, I receive you as my child. I'm going to forgive you. You become a child of God. The Holy Spirit comes in you and starts working and transforming you into the image of Christ. So open your heart to Jesus. Read the Bible. Remember, Jesus loves you. He died to save you. He died so that you would have a right standing before God. For those who have already accepted Jesus Christ, let's praise him for the pardon we have received. Let's praise him for the righteousness we have received, imputed righteousness. Hallelujah. 
Let's praise Him that we have the right position before God, an unbroken royal relationship with God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we just want to thank and praise you. Jesus, we want to thank and praise you because of the cross. We have received pardon. We are pardoned. We are forgiven for his name's sake. The rot is turned away because of the cross. Hallelujah. We want to thank and praise you. We want to thank and praise you, Lord, that we have received your righteousness, imputed righteousness. We want to thank and praise you for the gift of righteousness that leads to life. We want to thank and praise you for justification to eternal life. We want to thank and praise you, Lord, that now we are brought into a right position with the Father because of what you have done for us on the cross. We want to thank and praise you for the unbroken relationship. Oh, we praise you and we thank and praise you. Hallelujah. We give you glory, honor and praise. Thank you, Lord. May the Lord bless you. Continue to read the word of God and praise him because of your right positioning that has come because of Jesus Christ. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, I pray your blessings over everybody who's heard your word. Bless them. Draw them to you. Let your favor rest upon them. I give them all into your hands. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. For the final blessing. May the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit remain abide with you forever. Amen. And God bless you.